who were really system people not so long ago, uh, those sort of people now are um, are the ones that are are turning their minds and their their eyes to this. And so it's not just that numbers are increasing, but uh, the kind of people that are looking at this information now is extremely encouraging um, in, in in terms of um, how. Uh, rigid perceptions are starting to break down and you know it, it's it's extraordinary what what is happening now i mean i i remember just though i don't want to remember too much um when i couldn't walk down the street in in, in britain without being laughed at by most of the people and but all the time now constantly more and more i'm stopped in the street um everywhere with where people want to talk about this information i was having a cup of tea this afternoon in a really little cafe on the Isle of Wight, um, reading me paper, and uh, two separate people in that in that cafe. It was only small. Came up to me. One was a, a an older guy, and another was a, a, a young a young bloke. Um, and they were very different people, very different age groups. They were all big time into the information. So, you know, when um, you know, I was told all those years ago in the early nineties that there was a a change coming. There was a, a a vibrational information, whatever you want to call it, a frequency change coming that was going to touch more and more people. And they were going to wake more and more people up from their their, their coma, their slumber. Um, it's happening. It, it is happening. And it is worldwide. Uh, it, it's 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 an incredible feeling. It just gives me such 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 joy, such um, enthusiasm. Uh, to to go on, uh, given um, what I'm experiencing now. And, you know, you never thought this would happen because there was no sign of it 25 years ago. But now we are on the cusp of, 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 of major changes for the better in terms of people awakening to, to the world as it is and, and to themselves as they are and not what they've uh, they've been told they are. Two things on that. The first is, of course, is that most, that's very, very necessary for a guy like you. Because if you don't see that from time to time, you can become a bit disillusioned is probably the wrong word, but a bit discouraged or a bit disheartened. So it's great that that happens. And of course, when I spent time with you in London, I used to, I used to chuckle behind your back. We used to walk down Wembley High Street or somewhere else. So we take a we take a trip out of Wembley and go somewhere. And most of the people coming up to you and it happened every 10 or 15 minutes were young people. Uh, I hate to say that even because I'm not old, but, uh, you know, people in, in their early to, to mid 20s. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is, and I don't want to go negative because we've got so many important things to talk about. But the other aspect of you making greater strides and some others like you who've been around as long as you doing great things are that you have to deal with the sort of nonsense that I mentioned in the monologue and that you've been talking about on davidike.com headlines today. Now, how much or how little you want to get into that is entirely up to you. I've had my say on it. Um, these are the things you just have to endure, I suppose. Well, I, you know, I've been taking um, uh, a shite and abuse uh, for 26 years, mate. Um, you know, I, I've, I've, I've written the book on it, really. Uh, but I, I think it's just surreal, you know, um, and I think it's sad. You know, I think that's 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 what I feel most that sadness, because, you know, when you look at what's going on in the world and what is planned to go on and, and, and uh, how we we need to, to to deal with it, how we need to alert people to, to that so that, that we can collectively deal with it. When you're starting to make really big strides in in achieving that uh, more and more every day, to think that there's someone on the other side of the world um, claiming to um, want to get the information out, uh, who is just wanting to damage you at every opportunity, um, it's. I think it's sad. Um, it, it was that. What's that line about? Um, uh, resentment is drinking poison and waiting for the other guy to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, to 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 wake up every morning with that in your heart and to go to sleep every night in the same state, I think is sad. Um, it must be a, it must be a nightmare. And you know, Sean, for goodness sake, grow up, mate. You know, get on with your life because at the moment you're walking down the street with a hole in each foot and a smoking gun under each arm. And and you're going to go on doing that 
until you um, get on with your life and stop trying to damage uh, other people. Uh, and I, you know, I, I wish you well. I really wish you well. And I, I would I would just end with this. I'll just give you one quote, Sean, if you're listening. Mark Twain. Uh, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. And I think that's a bit of a lesson of today. Uh, and it's it's surreal. I mean, Baxter Dimitri, who is this? Who is this person? Yeah. Who's 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 hurling this abuse um, in all directions and making up these clickbait stories that are absolutely ludicrous uh, in their headlines and have no support for the headline in the text, but people have clicked on by then, so that's fine. Um, and Baxter, unfortunately, uh, if people look at um, what has happened, has had a very bad day. He started out as being someone else, and he ended up as two statues. It can't be easy. It can't. <laughs> um, so, so, but that's what yeah. I would say, you know, because. You know, I've taken historic levels of abuse. All this stuff is is a fly to an elephant's back to me. You know, it, it, it you know it, it's me it's me you're talking to. I, look what I've been through. Do you think that? Do you think that I care less about uh, uh, this? What it's doing is destroying Sean Edel. That's what it's doing. And of course, the abuse from far more serious operators with, you know, greater capability than the likes of him. I don't have your experience and all of your humility. I um, I tend to go for the throat, uh, throat even. I'm not somebody who carries a lot of anger with him, but I'm somebody who I, I can't stand injustice. I can't stand people doing things like that, bullying, cowardly things, saying things about people that are harmful. I'm not just talking about you, but much of the other stuff that's been put out there by that Your News Wire website. I was determined to unmask these people. And I have to say again, a huge thanks to Alex Doust because Alex came through. Thing about social media today, folks, if you've been on it for eight, nine, ten years, as long as Facebook is, and you've not been watching what you've been saying and what you've been doing, you've left a lot of footprints and a lot of fingerprints behind you. And that's what Sean Adel and his cohorts have done. I bear him no ill will either. I don't bear anybody any ill will. And I want, like you, I want to move away from talking about him and 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 that particular website. Yeah, because... but I, I think one thing it's important to 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 point out um, because if, you know if you if you get into the deeper realms of uh, reality and how we interact with it, um, you know what 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 you the intent you put out is the intent you get back, and and it, you know people people think that they for instance when they say things about other people that they're saying things about other people they're not. They think they are. What they're doing is making statements about themselves. They are expressing something within them um, that is making them um, uh, externalize it in the way they do when they think they're attacking someone else. Uh, and 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 if you keep putting that stuff out, then you'll draw to you the consequences of that and you'll keep doing it and you'll keep blaming other people and you'll keep saying it's someone else's fault that someone else is to blame and you get resentful uh, uh, about, uh, about these people who you have um, um, sought to explain your experiences away when actually you've created them yourself you know it, it's 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 about taking control of our lives back and and, and understanding that what you put out you get back and eventually that process will um, end uh, in, 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 in an unpleasant way. It doesn't have to. You just change what you're putting out. Stop putting out hate. Stop putting out resentment and, and, and just get on with your life and not trying to damage other people's lives. And then, and then you'll see how your life will change if you do that. Um, but, you know, it's just like um, people... Um, they need to vent what's inside of them, and 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 when that what's inside of them is 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 resentment and bitterness and hatred, then they cannot do anything but experience that um, in in terms of attracting what they put out, and 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 life's not going to be nice. So you know it's in it's in these people's hands to change what they put out, and they'll change what they get back. But I'm not sure that will happen anytime soon. So we're it, leaving that to one side because that's obviously somebody with a very bitter personal uh, problem. But just to touch on something that I spoke with Mike Rivero about last night, we didn't really get into it actually. I mean, you sent me a text that was a night I hadn't seen it. Um, 
we didn't really get into it with, with Mike, but we Mike touched on it with respects to Hillary Clinton coming after uh, the independent media or the independent media that's doing a good job of exposing stuff. But there are um, elements of the independent media that maybe not for personal bitter or twisted reasons like we've been discussing, but maybe for other reasons, are also becoming a bit of a hindrance. And I think that goes a long way. That goes side by side with what you described earlier on, which is that there, there has, we're seeing the success now. Slowly but surely, we're seeing that more and more people who you never would have believed would have picked up a David Icke book or would have had a listen to something on YouTube by Jim Mars or by Rivera or by whoever. We're seeing that. So is that why we're seeing such a lot of nonsense in some sections of the independent media? What do you think about that? Well, you know, I, I've said many times before, you know, people talk about the independent media or the alternative media as, as if it was like one entity. It's not. Uh, the independent media, as it's called, uh, some of it isn't, um, but uh, the alternative media, let's call it, um, is a massive spectrum that that on one end is almost imperceptibly different from the mainstream. It acts like the mainstream. It, it operates like the mainstream. It just has a slightly different uh, fix on on world events. And then you go right across this vast spectrum of the so-called alternative media. And at the other end, you've got um, uh, people like like me and others who are questioning everything. You see, uh, on the on the, uh, the what I call the the mainstream alternative uh, end of the spectrum, uh, they won't go into uh, alternative realities and and um, things that are considered far out because they're quote scientific and or religious um, point of perception uh, and belief will not allow them to do that. They'll they'll still go with uh, the mainstream science version of reality or, or some religious book, usually the Bible. Um, but you go to the other end of the spectrum and you get people who are questioning everything and, 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 and saying, whatever I've been told, it's now got to stand up to my scrutiny or otherwise I'm not accepting it in my reality. And that's where the cutting edge is. And that's what's going to um, uh, change uh, the world, if you like, and change human society, because it's going into those realms where everything comes from. You see, the, 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 what we see is only a projection of what we don't see. It's in the realms of what we don't see, and they're hidden beyond the frequency band of visible light, human sight, et cetera, et cetera, where um, both the manipulation is ultimately coming from and where the answers to that manipulation are ultimately coming from. Uh, and, and so this this vast um, spectrum of belief and perception called the alternative media is, is not an entity in and of itself. Um, and what I am, you know, quite, you know, not alarmed about, but what I'm disappointed about uh, in, in some areas is the way that while the cutting edge is moving all the time um, that I, as I've just described, and I, I would add this, you know, what I'm finding around the world, including among people who uh, uh, have up to this point been system thinkers, is that their the greatest fascination and interest that they have in this information is in the far out stuff as they, as, as they would have perceived before. And I, I, no one's more surprised than me. When, when you when you get into these things that appear to, you know, normal thinking, a program, normal thinking to be right out there and crazy. They're the kind of they're the kind of um, subject areas that people are most interested in. And uh, I, I find that very, very encouraging. It shows that, you know, this uh, awakening from the program, the postage stamp consensus, as I call it, the postage stamp normal is actually uh, moving much faster than um, than than even just looking at world events in a different way. Um, but what is sad, again, I think, is what I'm seeing, and, and it's been kind of concentrated by the, the, the Trump-Clinton election. We uh, anyone who who has um, done any research into the Clintons, and I started researching them in 
uh, the um, early 1990s. I mean, uh, the, the Clinton body count, all these people who had something on the Clintons who were no longer with us or weren't soon afterwards. Um, the uh, the fact that they were running drugs with the Bush family through the MENA airstrip in Arkansas um, and uh, all the, the uh, not just... Uh, manipulation of finances, manipulation of politics and, and all the drug running, um, uh, but also the um, fundamental involvement in mind control and um, uh, uh, slavery, mind slaves and sex slaves. All that um, I started uncovering uh, in the 1990s and is in uh, And the Truth Shall Set You Free, which I wrote in 1994 and, um, and in The Biggest Secret. So all this uh, stuff that's coming out about Hillary Clinton in terms of her corruption and, and what have you is, is of absolutely no surprise to me. And, and, and shocking as it is to the mainstream of, of, of the public arena, that where, the, where the, the mainstream media are actually putting it out, it's the alternative media who are actually doing it, um, it might be shocking what's coming out in terms of the, the emails and, and all the rest of it, but... Uh, it is small fry compared with what these people, the Clintons, have been involved in, uh, often with their great uh, bosom buddies, the the, um, the Bushes. Um, and when I say that, it's quite a sobering thought to think that um, from 1980, we had um, a, a Bush in the White House. Uh, it, we called him Reagan, but Father Bush was yeah, really the, the in president. Charge. We had two um, uh, um, uh, terms of that, um, Bush-Reagan, if you like. Then we had a term of Bush. Then we had a term of Clinton. Then we had another term of Clinton. Then we had a term of Boy Bush and another term of Boy Bush, two terms of Obama. And now quite possibly um, uh, Mrs. Clinton in the White House. Now, when you think that those two families are fundamentally operating together, then it really does uh, offer a complete personification of what I've been saying all these years, which is it doesn't matter who you vote for, um, the same hidden hand gets in. And, and, and if you look at the uh, American situation where there's more than 300 million people and still there's this naivety that America is a free country uh, because anyone can become president. And then you look at what I've just said about the presidency since 1980. Um, you can see actually how stitched up it is. Um, and so we, we, we uh, have this Clinton Trump election and it's basically the, the natural end product of where this has been leading. Uh, you know, we supposed to have political choice and we have the choice between this mega crook and worse Hillary Clinton um, and Donald Trump, who I wouldn't trust to tell me the time in a room full of clocks. Um, and, and of course, both uh, massive supporters of Israel. So that's the Israel-Palestine policy sorted, whoever gets in. Um, and, and this idea that Donald Trump is anti-establishment is ludicrous. You don't uh, make the money he has, although I don't think he's made as much as he claims. You don't uh, run casinos. You don't. You don't have building empires. No. Um, uh, if if you're anti-system. So tell me this then, David. Why are so many people in the United States, people that we know, and I'm not taking a, a, another shot at Alex and the gang. It's not just Alex and the gang. It's lots of people. People that we like and we admire are buying it and they're endorsing this clown and well, saying this is the way. Why is that happening, do you think? Well, this is where I was, I was leading to um, uh, in the end of what I've just said. Um, it's still this uh, hope, this clinging on to this dead idea that there are political answers to what needs to change. Um, and uh, when uh, Trump started um, saying uh, uh, some of the things that uh, people in the American alternative media uh, are, are calling for um, and support, well, away he went. And what's happened is an, an anti-Clinton um, mentality has become, for so many people, a pro-Trump mentality. 
And, and, and what I think is, is sad is that we're seeing a, a, a blatant fraud in, in Donald Trump being supported by um, parts of the alternative media who should be exposing him. And we are also seeing, and, and this, this in many ways is, is, is very uh, concerning, really, and that's the way that some parts of the alternative media are going backwards, not forwards to that cutting edge. And what I mean by that is um, by getting behind a, a politician running for president, as if that's going to change uh, anything, um, is going back to the old paradigm of um, we, we, we've got to change this through politics. Politics is there to stop change, not to make change. That's why it's there. That's its job. But there's also this, this other thing I'm seeing where it, it, this um, discernment of situations like terrorist attacks, where you would be saying, well, hold on a minute. Does the official story stand up? Um, and, and look at what's wrong with it. This is not right. That doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, is it a problem reaction solution? Um, uh, uh, in some areas, that's being put to one side. And a terrorist attack, which the authorities say was Muslim extremists, um, is uh, jumped upon to make propaganda against um, Muslims in general and to demonize Muslims in general. And, um, you know, uh, one of the things I mentioned in my in my talks was um, or is uh, a guy called Saeed Ramsey. He's uh, an undercover reporter for a French TV station. And he went uh, undercover um, well, last year, a few months ago, in a, quote, terrorist cell in Europe. And he came out um, and he said they had very little understanding of Islam, these people. And he called them fast food jihadists. He said one of the main um, lessons that he, he, he learned was that I never saw any Islam in, in the whole affair, no will to improve the world. And what he found in this terrorist cell were lost, these are his words, lost, frustrated, suicidal and easily manipulated youths who had been promised a palace and a winged horse of gold and rubies if they took part in terrorism. We are not, we have to um, see the shades of grey. The truth um, uh, is never in a single dot. It's in your peripheral vision. That's where the truth is. And, and, and that's where we need to look for it, in the shades of grey. And when you when you um, have um, uh, the Muslims in general, I mean me. I mean you know me in religion. I I I, I don't want. I I, I think they're all um, uh, mind control. Mind control. Yeah. I, I, th I think they're all. I think I think religion. I don't care what it's called. Um, it is the greatest form of mind control ever 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 uh, created. But uh, that doesn't mean again shades of grey that people shouldn't follow a religion if that's what they choose to do. Uh, although it's very indicative, I think, uh, to me, that if you're born in a Muslim family, you're almost certainly going to be a Muslim. If you're born in a, a Christian family, you're almost certainly going to be a Christian. Uh, if you take a religion up at all, if you're born into a Jewish family, you're going to follow Judaism. I, I, I wonder where the choice is in that. Yeah, there's none. When, when, when you've got such a blatant, um, uh, you know, born born into a, a a Muslim Jewish Christian family, become a, a, a Jew, a, a, a follower of Judaism, rather a, a a Muslim or a Christian. I mean, where's the choice in that? It's obviously a, a, a program download. That's where it comes from, overwhelmingly, uh, because of the environment that you were born into. But if people want to go to follow a religion, well, you know that oh, that's good. Or that, if that's what they want to do, it's called it's called you know. You know, do we life what you choose to do with it? But um, what um, we are seeing is this black and white um, uh, a view that if you're Muslim, you you are you are a danger, uh, and 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 that all encompassing nonsensical view um, is is coloring the the way that people see um, Muslims who have no desire to be violent and no desire to um, harm anybody. And to see um, parts of the alternative media 
put aside uh, looking at these terrorist events on the basis of is the government telling the truth, but instead jumping on the fact that Muslims are are blamed for it and thus um, demonizing um, all Muslims, which, of course, it, it comes brings us back to the whole Trump situation where he's basically doing that as well um, in, in, in terms of, you know, tarring every, everyone with the same with the same uh, with the same brush. Uh, and it's it's the these parts of the alternative media are, are at the moment in reverse. And when we need to be moving on and realizing that the answers are a not political and b that any um, uh, view that is black and white is almost all the time wrong. Can I jump in there with my tuppence worth on that? I can't yeah. find an argument with what you said, but I'm going to throw a butt in there. I think you're right. 99% of what you said there is right. And maybe we're going to go down this road. Maybe I've interrupted too soon again. But I think with some of them, I think there's a financial motivation for doom. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not saying for a second that some of them get paid by the likes of Donald Trump. They certainly do not. I'm not saying that at all. But I think they want to situate themselves somewhere and play to an audience. And financial and advertising revenue reasons are behind the dramatic change in the narrative, David? I don't know. Um, all I can all I can do, uh, Richie, is is just observe that yeah. there has been a change in the narrative. Um, and, and I don't think it's for the for the better, because, you know, whoever gets into um, the White House, whether it's uh, Clinton and, and with all these blare, uh, glaring um, um, health problems um, uh, that, that are, are being well documented by the alternative media, um, whether she's going to make it all the way uh, because of that, um, who knows. Um, but whoever gets in, the hidden hand will get in. There's no question about that. I mean, when you when you look at Donald Trump and you look at his statements um, through his through his life, never mind through his uh, campaigns to be president, he changes his, his, his state stance all the time. Um, he says he was for that when he wasn't. He says he's, he was against that when he wasn't. And of course, let's not forget, you know, I've just been through this um, this uh, reprise of the um, Bush Clinton domination of the White House since the since 1980. Uh, and let's not forget that, that Donald Trump and the Clintons um, have been very close over the years. Um, and And, you know, we've got to be much more streetwise. We've got to take a step back and observe from afar and not get pulled in. We get pulled into the game. We start playing the game by supporting players in the game as if they're going to change anything. They're not. We need to hold uh, to what um, to, to, to how we, we have always seen this. Uh, which is politics is an irrelevance. It's a game. It's it's a hoax. It's a sleight of hand. Don't get pulled into it because a lot of people are. You know why? Because they hope it's true. You know, the easiest way to manipulate people is to tell them what they want to hear. You know, the, people want to think that, that Trump is going to come in and change everything, that Trump is really going to make uh, America great again. But what does that mean? Um, more it's wars? Because that, that's what America's been involved in since it was formed. An extraordinary number of wars, no matter who's in power, one after the other. Um, I mean, th but th they want to believe it. And what you want to believe, you are more likely to um, allow yourself to get pulled into. Uh, it, it, if we're going to be streetwise, we've got to keep a step back. Just realize and hold on the fact that uh, as as people have said before the political system is rigged completely rigged but now what we're saying is it's rigged for trump no it's rigged it's and rigged yes of course stuff. the media is rigged against trump because what they really want is is clinton i mean trump would do but they really want clinton so of course the media is rigged against trump of course it is but the system the process itself is rigged it's there to keep the hidden hand in power. Don't get pulled into it, but so many are, and, and, uh, and they're moving back from the cutting edge by doing that. 
now I'm going. That's sad. It's terrible. I'm going to read a few tweets, and um, I, you uh, you're going to want to jump in there once or twice, but I'm going to ask you not to. I'll okay. read a couple of quick tweets, and then you and I talked earlier about what we'd like to talk about. The listeners have been tweeting in their hundreds, and they want comment from you on the historic child sex abuse inquiry and the loss of Lowell Goddard. They want a bit of comment later on on Omran Dakneesh or Dakneesh, the young Syrian yeah, yeah, boy. Good. They good. want to hear about that. And um, what was the third thing? There was something else they wanted me to, to ask you about as well. Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. But I'm going to read um, some of these tweets just very quickly, and I'm going to say hello yeah. to a few people. Hundreds have come in. Uh, hi to Wayne Winterfell. Wayne, how are you? Thanks for tweeting. Uh, Kirsty McDonald disagrees entirely with us. For for feck's sake, she says, read the Quran, maybe meet an ex-Muslim, or just open your eyes. Islam is in no way peaceful, says uh, Kirsty. Kirsty, you're entitled to your opinion. Uh, Alex says, uh, I just want to say hi to Alex Doust again. JP says, Trump will be president, he said, because the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers own own his debt of 650 million, uh, no less so far, uh, he says. Hi to Chris as well, Irish too cool on Twitter, to the healer Scott Cornish, good friend of ours. How are you doing, Scott? Uh, there is no God, he says. There is only energy. What people perceive to be God is the universal energy that flows through us, says Scott. Hi to Tony as well, to La Antenna, to Lady Alba, and to the lovely Lou, lovely woman who says, uh, you're the guy she'd most like to have over for uh, a dinner guest because nobody would be more interesting than you, she says. Right, uh, I'll leave that one there. You're right, by the way, Lou. I won't argue with that. Tony uh, says as well, plenty of gullible fools all over the world, he says. Yeah, I can agree with that, but maybe we need to try and understand these people more. Hi to Faisal, to Danny uh, Warden, to David Peacock, to Sean McDonald. Paul Jackson, how are you doing, Paul? Uh, listening to David agrees with him. So many people, says Paul, not believing the official version. This is why people are now believing the earth is not a globe. Paul, I think, is one of these people who believes that the earth is flat. Again, that's his opinion. Joanne says, great to hear the show back on air, Richie, and love and blessings to David Icke and to all. Hi to Luke Madison, to David Conan, to Robin Hood, to Mark Richards, to Mark Holden in Lanzarote. And I could be here all night. Spirit San, uh, Samba as well on Twitter and everybody else. Right. Shall I go through a few of those? Go on, go ahead. Well, just very quickly. Um, well, it, it, it's, it's not really about the Koran. It's about people. And um, I've, I've met uh, lots of Muslims. I've, I've, I've been to the Middle East and, um, and, and, and met people there. And they're some of the, they were some of the nicest, kindest most peaceful people you could ever meet. So whatever, you know, that is claimed to be in the Quran, they were Muslims and they were peaceful people. Uh, You'll get other people who will look at the same book and they will use it as a excuse to do terrible things Um, because they are not peaceful people. They are violent people. And thus they will um, seek ways to express that violence as others need ways to express their hate. And if, if that mentality was born in uh, a Jewish family, that they, they would be a, a violent Jewish person. If they're born in a Christian family, they'd be a, a violent Christian person. And it's, it's them. That's what it is. And, and it, it's no good just, just talking about a whole massive group of people uh, in in one line and just writing them off as this that and the other because of the acts of of of, of some, um, it, it's crazy uh, and 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 it, it's um, it's very very um, uh, not good for for um, the world in in terms of the black and white way that we see it, um, and, and so because there are uh, people doing deeply unpleasant things who've been mi- who've migrated into Europe. Um, to women and other things in in, in other ways in in Europe and so and and and, and people carrying out the terrorist attacks um, that mostly of the kind of people that I've just described from that um, that uh, undercover reporter uh, that that suddenly we we must therefore um, perceive anyone who's Muslim as being like that it's nonsense and it's fantastic for the foundation. Uh, technique of controlling uh, the many by the few, and that is divide and rule. We've got to see life, if we're going to get over divide and rule, we've got to see life in shades of grey. 
and, and, and realize that there are deeply violent people who are white. There are deeply violent people that are Muslim. There are deeply violent people that are Jewish and deeply violent people who are, uh, are black South Africans. And there are peaceful, loving people among all those same uh, groups. And, and if we start to see it in that way, then divide and rule becomes very much di more, uh, more difficult because we're dealing and, 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 and making judgments based on the person and not the group as a whole, um, which can include and does include people who perceive the world in very different ways, even though they call themselves the same thing. Now, just before I'm going to take a break, right? But just before we take the break, I, I've been asked to ask you by a number of people for a brief comment on um, the Celtic Football Club the fine they received from the football authorities of Europe, which I think is UEFA. In fact, I know it's UEFA because when they played a team from Israel in, I think in fact they're playing the second leg tonight, but in the first leg of a Champions League qualifier, the Celtic fans decided to make a statement and they held up Palestinian flags. The club was fined for it and there is a campaign now called Match the Fine for Palestine which is um, a kind of a spin-off to try and raise a few bob for the beleaguered people of Gaza. Mm -hmm. I know, obviously, um, you've been talking about the conditions and the brutality that Palestinians have had to live under for years. You've been talking about it. It's caused you all sorts of bother, of course, in terms of some of the things you've been called. So, of course, you have a, a comment on that. Andy, and I think it's Andy, by the way, who sponsors Jordan when Jordan comes on, uh, the lovely Andy Hunter from freestylehomes.com. Lovely guy, Andy. What do you think of that one, mate? Well, I, I, I wonder if the same reaction w would happen if, if there was an Israeli football club and the Israeli fans put up Israeli flags. I think um, uh, Netanyahu would be uh, screaming at every microphone um, that, that could be put in front of him uh, personally. And I think, you know, this, this actually does come uh, on from what I've just been talking about. Uh, if you uh, demonize a whole people uh, for the acts of a few, then that demonization kind of deletes the same level of empathy you would normally have because they've demonized. So in some perverse way, they deserve it. So if you can demonize um, Palestinians and um, Muslims in general as uh, mass murdering uh, maniacs, um, and that's what Netanyahu, of course, is always trying to do um, to justify the, the horrors he inflicts upon them, then uh, you're going to get um, uh, more, more people who are going to say, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you, they deserve it. Drop a bomb on all of them. Yeah, but you've heard that. I've heard that. Um, and and it's, it's, it's when you start demonizing a, a, a group, when in fact what we're facing here is uh, an uh, open-air concentration camp in Gaza with um, vast numbers of people within it who only want peace, who only want enough to eat, who only want to uh, see their children grow up, who just want to get on with their lives in, in, in some sort of um, uh, mode worth having instead of just existing as they are at the moment in, in a, a, a concentration camp, open air concentration camp that has been devastated by mass uh, uh, bombing, by state of the art technology. And then um, the rebuilding process um, virtually being next to non-existent compared with what needs to be done. So we, we have these uh, people um, who are not terrorists, who are not trying to, you know, um, kill anybody, um, the, the vast overwhelming majority, they're trying to survive. They're trying to survive um, it, it, under the control of a vicious, vicious uh, state of imposition and racism, which is what the Israeli regime is. It's unbelievably racist. And uh, it, uh, it has uh, this whole racial superiority it, it, it has in relation to where it is compared with where um, the, 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 the Arabic people are and, and the, the, the Gaza people are. And we have, because of the, uh, the fact that Israel is in fact a, a Rothschild fiefdom, uh, we have this sliver of land with, what, 8 million people yeah. having this massive impact on the world. 
this incredible fundamental impact on the Middle East and having such influence in um, the uh, governments of the world and the government groupings of the world, like um, like the UN, etc., that um, the Palestinians' voice is not heard and can't be heard. And so when you have a football match and these Celtic fans want to make uh, a statement of solidarity with these uh, Palestinian people in the uh, horrific, horrific daily, hourly lives that they are forced to live because of the oppressor, uh, to get fined for it by dark suit um, administrators of, 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 of a sport I think is is outrageous, um, and um, it, it would not be the same if it was the other way. It certainly uh, and of course, the, the Palestinians have very few people to talk for them. You know, mo most uh, politicians around the world are so terrified of the Rothschild stroke um, Israeli influence that they um, they keep their mouths shut, uh, at best keep their mouths shut, or uh, at worst become sycophants for Israel. And this is not about politics and it's not about race. It's about basic humanity, the basic humanity of looking at people in terrible straits who are being treated in the, the, a fascist way. No other word for it. Um, and, and the world looks on while, while the, the, the leaders of, of a sliver of land of eight million people basically do what the hell they like. And um, it's uh, it's it's the way it's always been since the invasion. And uh, it's the way it will go on being until enough people say we're not having it. And, and you know, this um, campaign of um, uh, boycotting, which which has uh, got a lot of speed around the world, boycotting um, uh, businesses in these occupied territories, has become so successful that, of course, they're running around now um, using their puppets in government um, around the world to try to um, put it down and destroy it. Criminalise it, aren't they, David? Criminalise it, in yeah. In Canada, they've tried to criminalise it, yeah. And, and also um, doing the same with companies. Um, so w when you look at the influence on the world, the influence in the United States, the influence in Europe and everywhere else that um, Israel has... It's clearly not because of eight million people um, in, a, in, a, in a, a tiny piece of land in the Middle East. It's because of who controls that land, who that, who, 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 what Israel really is and who um, owns Israel. Uh, that's where the influence comes from. I mean, you know, I, I have this phrase. I, it's, I think it, it, it's really, it really works. Take, take, a, take a deep breath, take a step back, look at it again. Look at it dispassionately. Why does Israel have such phenomenal um, influence on, on events, um, given what it is? Because what it is, is just a fiefdom for what really has that influence. And that's the House of Rothschild and all the networks that come from it. We are going to pause. The third thing, do you like the way I have to say my TH is there, right? The third TH. The third thing that people wanted to hear you talk about, of course, was whether or not we're going to leave the European Union. So what we're going to try and do in the final hour, well, we're going to talk a little bit about Omran Dakniesh and the journalist or the photojournalist Mahmoud Razlan. This is very interesting. David will comment on Lowell Goddard and the child sex abuse inquiry, and we'll try and squeeze in a little bit about Brexit as well. Our guest on this programme is the one and only David Icke. Go to davidike.com forward slash headlines. That's where the news is. As well as that, the theworldwidewakeup.com. If you're in America, and many of our listeners are, if you can get to see David in New York, Los Angeles or San Francisco, it will be a life-changing experience. All the details at theworldwidewakeup.com. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Do you want to release the full potential of your soul consciousness and find out how to experience that power in all areas of your life now? Go to livingasyoursoul.com for free guidance with in-depth how-to articles free healing meditations of creation recordings, free soul solutions, and much, much more. Livingasyoursoul.com, making the profound 
practical. Have you lost access to important data from a computer hard drive, mobile phone, or other storage device? Maybe you have a broken hard drive containing years of information, or a smartphone that no longer works from which you'd like the pictures, movies, and chats recovered. If you would like to recover data from any type of digital device, including desktop and laptop computers, external hard drives, cameras, smartphones, NAS, and RAID servers, then contact Data Clinic today at dataclinic.co.uk now. Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. Welcome back. Saying a third is difficult. A number of you laughing is that on Twitter. When I was on local radio many years ago, I was criticised regularly in the confession sessions. That's when uh, the head of programmes or the head of music critiques your programmes. And I was hammered for not pronouncing my THs. There's a point where I got very, very insecure about it. I saw it later on. I thought, well, it's local radio. And Irish people say 33 and a third. You don't say 33 in a third. It's difficult. But anyway, you get there. Right, loads of tweets coming in. I'm going to just quickly go through one or two. Then I'm going to shut up and we're going to talk to David about the big story of last week when I was away. That's the story of the Syrian boy. We've seen presenters on NBC News and CNN in America crying as they look at the, it must be said, tragic looking picture and video of a young boy sitting in the back of an ambulance, ambulance even, after an air raid. We'll come to that now in a couple of minutes. Hi to Natalie Stacey. Hope all is going well in the pub, Natalie. Lovely to uh, uh, hear from you. To Tommy B as well. Tommy, how are you? Nice to hear from you, Tommy. We will get to Brexit with David a bit later on in the programme. Lots of discussion going on. If you want to debate with other people, you go to Twitter, you put Richie Allen Show all one word into Twitter, then you press enter. When you do that, you see all the tweets I've had. So you can chat with others and you can debate with others as well. It's good. Okay, hi to Jane. How you doing, Jane? That's uh, Jekko Jane on Twitter as well. Uh, I said Sue, didn't I? And Scott and all of that. Right, good stuff. Right. I came across a video on LiveLeak.com today. LiveLeak is run by Hayden Hewitt. It's one of the biggest websites in the world. It's a wonderful resource, uh, like DavidIke.com, to find info you don't get in the mainstream. Really interesting report on uh, that. I don't know if it was posted today. I just found it today. Uh, David was looking at it. David's been following this story as well. The story of Omran Dakniesh, five-year-old boy, uh, rescued after a bombing in Aleppo, we were told. Picture was taken of him in an ambulance, dazed and confused and covered in ash or soot or whatever. It looked terrible, didn't it? It looked terrible. But, David Icke, my friend... It looks like not all is as it seems. And in the following days, right up until today, and it's ongoing, it looks like that story is beginning to unravel as well. What have you made of it? Well, you know, one of the greatest forms of manipulation of perception and thus manipulation of action and reaction is emotion. You know, people uh, interact with the world emotionally, overwhelmingly. And therefore, if you can get people into an emotional state, the kind of emotional state that you want, then you can get them to not just agree to things, but to support, even demand things they wouldn't otherwise have done without the emotional charge that you've manipulated them to have. And, you know, these people are, um, they are a deleted of the ability to have empathy. They have no empathy. This is this is why they do what they do. This is why these bloodlines and these families do what they do. They do not have an emotional consequence for what they do like the rest of us do. Um, that's when you know people say to me, well, they would never do that. No, you would never do that. They would do, do that and get off on it because they don't have the emotional consequence that we have. They cannot put themselves emotionally into... Um, the position of those that they make suffer. So, um, but uh, they know the target population does have that emotional, um, empathetic, or, or much of it does, um, ability. And so um, to get people to agree to things that, or, or to perceive things in the way you want, a very effective way of doing it is to um, trigger people's emotion. So you look at this um, Ormond Daknish, this five-year-old, and 
um, I was looking uh, at that picture again today, and I watched the video that you've just mentioned. Um, you cannot help but but feel it in the heart uh, uh, when you look at that. You 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 because empathy demands it. Empathy will have nothing else. And uh, what what you we have seen, of course, uh, with the United States and Britain, etc., um, losing the if you like the propaganda war in Syria more and more, you've had this um, uh, kind of explosion of emotion as a result of that um, picture. And and the narrative with that emotion or state has been basically the Russians and Assad did this. Now that, that's been basically the, the narrative, if you, if you look at it. It was Russian bombing or it, and, 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 of, of rebels. And of course, rebels is just code for um, uh, uh, American proxy army uh, 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 fighting Assad. And, and, and what it, 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 it's understandable that we, we, we feel these emotions. And my goodness me, we should. I mean, look at that kid. But we've also, again, if we're going to be streetwise, we can feel that emotion, but not get manipulated by it. We can feel emotion for the child, but also uh, not forget that that child was there ultimately because the United States and the hidden hand behind the United States and, and Britain, big time Britain, um, started that um, attack on Assad, which has led to the catastrophe that has followed. Um, and, and that can get lost when you get pulled into emotion. Uh, you, you Again, you stop thinking straight because that's what a great charge of emotion does. And you lose, again, peripheral vision. All you can see is that which is triggering the emotion. Uh, and, and if you um, look at what happened almost a year ago now to that three-year-old uh, Aylan Kurdi uh, from uh, Kobani in um, Syria, he was the three-year-old little boy found on the beach. Now, when it comes to um, triggering empathetic emotion and empathetic um, reaction, I mean, there can't be many pictures like that, that little boy lying on the beach uh, um, uh, dead uh, as a result of drowning, trying to get um, across into Europe um, with his family and others. Um, and what followed that, uh, uh, of course, it went around the world and people felt that emotion again. What followed that was uh, a, a massive uh, um, uh, increase in the number of migrants coming into Europe on the back of that. It, it was in the aftermath, if you remember, Richie, of that, that photograph, that massive emotional charge that was felt around the world. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that, that Mrs. Merkel, who um, is owned by the hidden hand down to her DNA, um, opened the doors of Germany to anybody. Um, and, and if you remember, as because of that picture, this is how powerful this manipulation is. That picture, um, you, you had um, Germans on the, um, on the station platforms um, applauding the migrants as they came in. And I'll tell you why, because it's all manipulation. Mate. It's all psychological and emotional manipulation. The reason they did that is they associated all these people coming into Europe with that little boy, that image that, that they were that little boy. That's what the emotional connection uh, was and why it uh, played out like that. But again, it shades of gray. Um, people who are in war zones. Uh, and in terrible situations, need to be helped. They need to be given shelter. They need to be um, a, a allowed to um, get to places where they have safety, where they have food, where they have uh, shelter. But um, that emotional um, charge, because of that uh, horrific picture of uh, Aylan uh, Kurdi, meant that everyone coming in, a great numbers of them were not, coming away from war zones. Uh, they were taking advantage of, of, of the fact that the, the doors were opening. Um, but they were all associated at that time with that little child, that three-year-old on the beach. And now, of course, um, things are being seen in a different light because we're back to shades of grey. Um, not everyone um, coming into Europe, A, is a refugee from war. 
um, wars created by the West, and, and therefore uh, it, the West uh, should be giving them shelter. Um, there are people coming into Europe uh, 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 in that same uh, migration who are deeply, deeply, deeply unpleasant people and have a different uh, way of um, seeing women, for instance, um, and, 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 and all that. And so and let's not forget that the men who were jailed for um, uh, the, the, uh, the drowning of Aylan Kurdi and the others that died with him um, were Syrian men, right? So let, let, we've got to get out of this mode of black and white. Syrians good, Syrians bad. No, most Syrians are lovely people. Some of them are, are very deeply unpleasant people who are doing this, uh, trafficking people uh, to their deaths. And, 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 and people coming to Europe, peaceful people. Some of them are deeply unpleasant people. It's not black and white. But people uh, uh, always try, try to, to, to see it like that and to paint it like that, which is what we we're talking about earlier with parts of the alternative media who are doing that now. All Muslims bad. Um, and we um, have a situation where emotion is a massive uh, vehicle for manipulating people. Uh, as a result of the emotional outpouring for uh, Aylan Kurdi, Vast numbers of people um, went into Europe that wouldn't normally have, have, have got in, uh, not refugees, opportunists. And, and now um, uh, the, the, the consequence, that's what the hidden hand wanted. I mean, you look at Soros, you look at um, uh, Merkel, you look at um, other um, agents of the hidden hand. They're all pushing for, for this mass migration into Europe because that's the plan, because they want um, a cultural war. They want civil war. Um, in, in Europe, because uh, you create chaos and upheaval, easiest thing in the world to manipulate. That's why uh, uh, people like Soros have been caught out, even by some uh, a mainstream, at least one mainstream television station in uh, America, of doing the same there. They want this, and, and, and they, they've got to the situation where they are now, which is what they want, massively because of a single picture that, that, that open the doors of this three-year-old um, Aylan Kurdi. And, and, and I'm looking at this uh, picture and the use of it um, by, uh, of uh, Orman Daknish. And, of course, the photographer, as you indicated, that took the picture, Mahmoud uh, Raslan, is uh, connected to, uh, you can see pictures of them together, to a terrorist group that beheaded a Palestinian child. Now, this is really important. What David is saying here is absolutely true. The, the guy, Mahmoud Raslan, is pictured with friends of his who are from a very difficult to pronounce Islamist group in Syria. I think it's Harakat Nur al-Din al-Zenki. And those guys that he's pictured with, it isn't Dr. in any way, it is him with those guys. As David just said there, they were responsible for that gruesome beheading of that young boy, uh, again, a story that was covered in the British mainstream press as an example of the horrors in Syria and what's happening in Syria and because of Assad and all of that. And he is linked to these guys, David. And this is the guy who's come forward with the picture of young Omran in the back of the ambulance. Yeah, exactly. And, and th th you know, l let's look at that again um, in terms of and in, in the light of what I've been saying tonight. Uh, what is ISIS doing this front for the United States. Um, it's alleged, they allege that they're um, uh, Islamic um, uh, people, but they are attacking who? White people overwhelmingly? No. European people overwhelmingly? No. Arab people, Muslim people. It's, it, it's a, an attack by uh, a, an Islamic, uh, allegedly or Islamic extremist group upon um, fellow followers of Islam. You know, it's, 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 they've created, in effect, a, a civil war across the Middle East with Muslims fighting Muslims. And, of course, fueled um, by people like Saudi Arabia, who were just uh, fronts for the Americans, Europe, and, and the hidden hand. That's why uh, America and um, Britain are um, arming uh, the, um, the the Saudi royal family and the Saudi military to do 
absolute horrors and uh, mass murder and catastrophe in the Yemen. And, and why the um, uh, Saudi Arabians and the, 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 the Qatar have been the vehicle for arming these groups that then attack fellow Muslims. What's happening here is, is a, a, a civil war has been created um, where Muslims are fighting Muslims, which is exactly what the hidden hand wants, because then it's much easier to take over. And if Putin had not come in and, you know, you, you're not um, uh, the leader of Russia for as long as he has been leader, unless you are absolutely bloody ruthless. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, uh, Putin, Putin is, uh, you know, uh, you know, running, running, uh, uh, you know, a uh, 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 fairyland. Um, but if he had not come in, then Assad would have gone by now and they'd have got what they wanted. Uh, and and so, again, this picture of this little five year old taken by this photographer connected to this beheading terrorist group, mad people, completely bonkers, um, um, has been used to further uh, demonize uh, Russia and Assad um, uh, because they're still trying to. Um, get to the end goal that they want, which is which is just taking over Syria and then moving on elsewhere. So we're not uh, far away. Sorry to interrupt you, David. So we're not really far away then from Theresa May and the next US president, who I'm pretty certain it'll be Hillary Clinton. So let's just say it is. We're not too far away from Theresa May and Hillary Clinton announcing to the to the public of Great Britain and the United States and to the world at large that unless Assad does this, does this by, let's say, the 21st of October, well, no, it wouldn't be, would it? It would be maybe uh, December or maybe January next year after the election. Unless he does this by then, we'll have no choice but to launch a ground war. That's where we're going, right? Well, that, that's that's been the plan all along. Um, but, I mean, the, the Americans are already on the ground. and And what we're seeing is things starting to move into place uh, in this conflict that is planned and has been long planned, as I've been saying, for a long, long time, um, where the West is pitched against Russia and China. When I was in Australia, it was all kicking off in the South China Sea um, in relation to uh, to, to China um, claiming rights to um, areas of the South China Sea and uh, that Hague uh, Tribunal saying no, it, it's um, it's not yours. It's the the Philippines and America coming out. Oh, China's terrible, and they must be stopped from doing this. And and uh, there's various things going on in the South China Sea now with American um, uh, naval shipping and um, and uh, um, Chinese. Also, there's a big conflict there between uh, Japan and um, China over the uh, East China Sea. Uh, and and in uh, the Middle East now, in terms of Syria, uh, now you've had for the first time uh, Russian planes bombing in Syria from Iranian air bases. This is pulling Iran more into it. We've had the announcement that um, China is um, wanting to get uh, uh, closer to Assad. They've always been in the background in Syria. Um, supporting Assad, just like uh, Russia. Uh, but they want to get more, uh, if you like, high profile in their support for Assad. Uh, and then we've got the, the things going on in uh, in Ukraine after a completely manipulated uh, so-called people's revolution. Uh, and and so these, pe- these pieces are being moved into place. And, um, you know, what we need to do is is to get out. This is what I'm trying to do as, as, as one individual is to get out to as many people as possible around the world that what this plan is, this plan for the Third World War to um, complete the transformation of human society into a global centralized state, um, a, a world government and a world army to stop this war ever happening again. That That's the, the line they'll take. Um, so if we can get out, and I know this has an impact from from people I'm meeting more and more. Um, if we can get out what the plan is before it, it becomes blatant, then it dilutes in people's minds um, their ability to buy the lie, to buy the narrative. If they if they uh, know it was planned all along and they see it start to unfold. Hold on a minute. This this is this is what they they're, they're planned to happen and it dilutes the impact you know if if um the 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 truth about um uh 
uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and have got out in a big way uh, before um, the invasion, they would have found it, it much, much harder to justify the invasion. Um, and 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 so it, information and getting it out ahead of the game is very, very important because otherwise people meet um, these long planned situations as random events that come together and lead to war when actually it's all been manipulated all along. It's very, very important we get this information out because it is the puzzle pieces and the or the pieces on the um, on the chessboard, as um, Brzezinski would would call it. Uh, are being moved quite to anyone that's followed this are blatantly being moved into place. And, um, you know, Syria is a powder keg. It could kick off any time in terms of Russia and the West. We're, um, we're, it's uh, 21 minutes past the hour. That, um, I, I'm mindful of time because I do want to talk about uh, the child sex abuse inquiry and also get a word on um, the, 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 the idea, well, I suppose the, the absolute desperate misery that people are expressing to me through um, social media is that they went out and voted that Britain should leave the European Union and they now believe that it's very unlikely it's going to happen. We'll, we'll come to that in a minute. Before we do that though, I just want to mention David is in the United States um, he's leaving I think next week to go there, maybe the week after he's in New York Grand Prospect Hall on September the 10th, that will be an amazing, amazing uh, event that the day before the 15th anniversary of 9-11. He's then off to Los Angeles on September 17th at the Irvin Marriott. And on September the 24th, he's at the Craneway Pavilion in San Francisco. Go to davidike.com or uh, the worldwidewakeup.com for more information on getting tickets for any of those events. It's uh, terrific. It's something that, as I said earlier on, will change your life. It really will. So we'll just, we'll just move then to something else that happened during my uh, three-week summer holiday. And that was Lowell Goddard, the New Zealand woman, the New Zealand judge, who was appointed as the latest head of the Historic Child Sex Abuse Inquiry. She was appointed by Theresa May, our listeners will remember that, who also appointed Elizabeth Butler Sloss and Fiona Wolfe. Should have had to resign as Home Office Minister or as a Home Secretary. Should have had to maybe, um, what well, should have had to leave politics in disgrace after appointing two women with very strong ties to people suspected of either abusing children or covering up that abuse. But no, that's not the way things work these days. She's become Prime Minister since appointing Goddard. Goddard is gone. David, some of the victims who really, God love them, who, who, who suffered on imaginably, at least for me it's unimaginable anyway, and maybe don't understand what's really going on, they believe that they were onto something with Lowell Goddard. They're now devastated. You've been writing about this longer than anybody, going way back to, to <coughs> excuse me, the biggest secret, Children of the Matrix, all the other books. What's going on here with the resignation of Lowell Goddard? Well, um... It's a, a classic technique of um, drag it out and uh, drown it in procedure, in documentation, in um, administration. I read um, an article about um, this inquiry uh, by a journalist who'd been to a number of sessions of it. And nothing was happening uh, because um, there, there was, for instance, so many people legally represented, organisations uh, galore, all wanted a say, all wanted to get their oar in, that nothing was happening. I mean, the, the simplest thing was taking forever to do. And what they've done, and I, I, we've not really had a, 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 a detailed explanation for why Lowell Goddard um, uh, resigned, uh, as far as I've seen anyway. I was in New Zealand, funnily enough, where she comes from uh, when it happened. Um, but uh, what they're doing is uh, giving so many things, so many cases, so many situations to this inquiry to um, to judge on and to investigate that it's being drowned in um, 
documents, in, in procedures, in lawyers, all of it. And it's not moving. And when you've got a situation you, what you, that you don't want to come out, then what you do is you delay um, it coming out. You throw um, spanners in its works wherever you can. And I think it is possible, it seems to be one of the things that's coming out, that, that, that Lowell Goddard basically looked at it and, and just said, where do I start? I don't, you know, she was saying she didn't understand some areas of, of British law, which doesn't really uh, help, uh, to say the least. But, you know, when you when you look at the scale of it and the, the all the different things it's supposed to be investigating and the scale of all, all the, the procedure and administration and documents and, and, and all the rest of it, she must have looked at it and gone, uh, you know, what, what, where do I start? What do I do? I mean, it's not, how, how's, how's this going to go anywhere? And uh, so uh, we're back to where we were before. Now it's another one bites the dust. That's the third one gone. And you're right, Theresa May was responsible for appointing all three. And, and she's now prime minister. And, and, oh, it's all fine. I'm prime minister. Well, it's not all fine because look what you've done to this um, investigation. You've basically destroyed it. And from what I read of this article, uh, where it was describing just one morning's proceedings or another time, another day's proceedings, and what the, 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 the tiny, tiny next to nothing that happened in that period, goodness knows when this is, is uh, going to uh, report. And, and of course, it will be years ahead. And that's what they're doing. They're throwing it into the long grass. And, and and putting as much time between people's uh, uh, real awareness of it, which was when it all came out and it was everywhere, um, and and of course it's now largely been forgotten by by most people. The uh, revelations that came out in the wake of uh, uh, of the Jimmy Savile revelations and all that followed, and it's been slowed down. And and this is the way they work. You know, uh, I, I did a, I did a, I did a, 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 a meme um, when um, uh, this was all breaking and the political paedophile ring was was uh, uh, becoming mainstream uh, knowledge of uh, Prime Minister uh, David Cameron saying, "Oh my God, what do I do? Oh, I know, I'll, I'll call an in inquiry and 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 spin it out as long as I can," and, and that uh, was to that effect, and and that's what's happened. Uh, and um, if this Justice Lowell Goddard looked at it and thought, I can't cope, well, I, I can have some sympathy with that if that was the reason. And it, it's this this thing of dragging something out um, is also applicable to the other question that's been raised, which is Brexit. You know, when when we um, when we voted to, to come out, there should have been a quick um, um, uh, uh uh, activation of the article that, that started the process and we should have started the process by now but instead they've um they're dragging it out and dragging it out and, and the prime minister may comes in and says brexit means brexit well that sounds good and that sounds positive but then the it, it, it's again dragged out and the longer they can drag it out the more events can happen where they say, well, actually, you know, in, in the light of current events, we, we feel that the British people should should be given another chance to see if they really want to do this. And that that is a possibility. Um, and, and that which campaigned uh, so uh, successfully to um, to get us out must not now walk away and think the job's done. As I as I said, within a, an hour of the um, of the vote, this is just the start. This is just the start. Uh, and it, it, it was and it is. We've got to keep at it. We've got to keep the pressure on and um, uh, not just think that it's going to it's going to happen because we voted it uh, for it. That, that's absolutely not necessarily the case. But um, we mustn't let them get away with it. Simple as that. And be again, be streetwise that there are very significant, powerful forces that want that want to um, make sure we don't come out. But um, we must make sure that we do. And it's that dragging it out process and that's, I suppose, that's so discouraging for people to see. And then, of course, they they observe that the, the team that led the Vote Leave campaign, people, of course, you know, most memorably, people like Boris Johnson. And um, I think, if memory serves, Liam Fox was also one. 
yeah. Michael Fallon was one. Uh, well, Johnson is now, of course, Foreign Secretary. Um, Fox was appointed to the Cabinet as well. And these guys have gone very silent about the urgency for Britain to, uh, to, to at least inform, officially inform Brussels that uh, the United Kingdom, I should say not Britain, the United Kingdom wants to leave the European Union. And one of the things I... You, you know, I, I obviously do have a soapbox. I do have opinions and I say things from time to time. One of the things I was very concerned about at the very beginning was how these guys were almost made the official vote leave team because of who they are. And um, I mean, you talked at great length on com about how Johnson at the very beginning was saying that he would renegotiate Britain's way back in under more favourable terms from an out position, which was absolutely ludicrous. So these people were almost like they were ringers from the word go, David. Johnson yeah, well, like. they're, they're politicians. They're, not, they're, they're overwhelmingly, with yeah. a few honourable exceptions, not to be trusted. And um, what they say in the moment is what suits them in the moment. And they'll say something else in another moment. This is the way uh, uh, politics works. So I, I, I wouldn't trust Johnson. I wouldn't trust, uh, trust any of them. We can only um, uh, judge the situation by their actions, not by their words. And just because Theresa May says Brexit means Brexit does not mean that that's how it turns out. Um, what we must do, uh, like I say, is 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 keep the pressure on and not just sit around and say, well, uh, I, I'm a bit worried that that, that 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 we won't come out. Well, let, let well, let's get involved then. Let's get involved. Let's put the pressure on. Let's keep highlighting the fact. Let's keep pressurizing them to to um, to trigger that article that um uh, will start the process. Uh, uh, let's k- keep on. You know, th- this is the thing um, that uh, y- you you kind of learn when you, you you're involved in this uh, for a long time. the The greatest um, uh, the greatest thing that you can have, and the most important thing you need, is persistence to keep um, coming back, being knocked down, getting up, and coming back. And, and taking a few steps f- further forward and then getting knocked down and then getting up and then going back and taking a few more steps forward. It's not, you know, it's not when you're dealing with something that doesn't want something to happen, then you, it's not just going to happen uh, if you sit around and, and, and think it's just going to happen. It's not. You've got we've got to keep going and, and, and keep being persistent and not not think it's just for an election campaign. It's not. They don't want us to come out of Europe. The, the hidden hand doesn't. The establishment doesn't. None of them did. They had the shock, uh, uh, a massive shock when, when people ignored almost the entire political spectrum in Britain saying we must stay in and voted uh, to come out. And therefore, they're not going to go quietly. Uh, you know, it's, that was blatantly obvious. And so we have to watch not every word meaningless. We need, have to, we need to watch every action because that actions are what tell, t- t- tell us what's going on, not words. They're to cover what's going on. Daniel Ford tweets, a number of people have tweeted this as well. Hi, Daniel. Does David think it's a possibility that we actually will never leave Europe? But I suppose if we think that, we'll be pessimistic. What do you think? Um, Well, um, that is what the hidden hand wants, clearly. I mean, the the whole idea of the EU is is to absorb more and more countries and therefore more and more sovereignty not let people um, out to get some sort of sovereignty back. I mean, this is this is exact, not exactly what they uh, didn't want. So uh, they don't want us to leave Europe. Now, we as a people then have to decide if we're going to let them get away with that. Um, and, and, and that decision and, and how we respond to it will decide if they if they get away with it or not. And, and what um, we, we need to be pressing for is to get this um, process started, uh, because the longer it doesn't start, the more, um, again, people forget. People forget other things come into their lives. You know, the, the, if, if we go into um, uh, big situations around the world in terms of world events, then coming out of the EU is going to go into the background in terms of people's focus, but and that's the idea that something will come along that will give them the excuse to say, well, we must give the British people a- another choice in the light of, co- of of new events. That That's probably what they're, what they're planning to do, but we, we just must not let them do it. We, we must keep the pressure on to 
um, to trigger these articles so we can get through this and, and, and get out of this this fascist communist um, prison state called the EU. But it's we're going to need persistence in all areas. We're going to need persistence. This is not a, this is not a hobby. You know, this is this is, if you like, this is a mission. Thus, um, we need to keep at it, not when there's an R in the month and when it suits us. We need to keep at it, uh, it all the time we can. That's the way we'll push the wall down, not by sitting and looking at the wall and hoping it's going to fall down by itself. Yeah, it's not. you've got to take some action. I'm going to read a few tweets, um, and then I'll take a, a, sm- a small break. And when we come back, then I'm just going to ask you about what people can expect in the United States uh, ongoing, David. We'll, we'll have a little chat about that, and um, what's going to happen in the next month or so, and then we'll let you go then. We've taken up a lot of your time. I know you're really busy, and you have a load of these to do because you're in great demand, of course, with the media, the mainstream and the independent media in the United States ahead of your uh, trip and your uh, tour there. Uh, D tweets, uh, D, D, uh, uh, Derek even, Irish Catholic Church looks a lot uh, or even took a lot of heat over child sex abuse, rightly so. But I think, uh, says Derek, it's small change compared to the United Kingdom. Uh, that's an interesting one, that. Uh, moving on. The thing, the thing about that, Rich, is... Um you know, uh, you know. I, I, as you know, I've um, investigated and researched this subject uh, at great length over a lot of years. Um, um, it's ingrained everywhere, everywhere. You know, I, I just went to Australia. It's ingrained there. It's ingrained in New Zealand. It's ingrained in the United States. It's ingrained in Britain. It's ingrained in in, in Ireland. I'm talking about within within the establishment and well within the Catholic Church. For sure, but I mean, within the establishment, in all its um, in all its facets and expressions, within the political establishment, within the um, uh, the administrative uh, establishment, within the corporate establishment, the banking establishment, it's ingrained, uh, and there are reasons for it. They're deep in the rabbit hole reasons, but there's reasons why these um, elite bloodlines and their offshoots and gophers are involved in child abuse on the scale that they are. Um, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's staggering in its scale. Um, and uh, it, it's not just a church. It's not just a Westminster pedophile ring. It's a massive global uh, disease, um, uh, especially, although it's it's at all levels of society, especially in these um, so-called elite um, uh, levels of, of the network and the bloodlines. It's 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 it's. It's part of life there. I mean, incest among family, those families, it's part of life. It's just, it's just, it's not even, you know, it's their normal. That's the good way of putting it. Yeah, it's it's the their norm. normal. Yeah, it's the norm. So uh, it's everywhere. Deb, Rich tweets, by the way, and all we do is drone on about how many medals we won in some sick self-gratification uh, for feck's sake. He's referring to the Olympics. Martin Houston tweets, we need a CSA inquiry properly run at a proper pace, concentrating on the Westminster paedophile ring. Now, Deb Fernandez tweets that... Well, that's, a quick, that's a very important point that's been made there. Uh, yeah, it's a good point, that, yeah. The, the reason, or one of the reasons, I've just given one of the, uh, of the other reasons, but one of the reasons they've given this um, inquiry so many different things to investigate and report on is to swamp the Westminster paedophile ring part of it. What there should have been is a um, an inquiry specifically on that and and the offshoots of it, um, uh, and and then another inquiry in, into other things, so that people who were running these inquiries, at, at, were dealing with something they could handle, dealing with something of a size, of a scale, that, that they could make relatively rapid progress in. But by dumping it all together, they are, they are um, drowning out the Westminster paedophile ring and they're making it almost impossible to administer and therefore uh, report in any credible way, certainly in any credible timescale. That's what's going on. Brilliant stuff. Deb Fernandez says her family was schooled by her late father, who was a World War II veteran. He was well smartened up to all of this by the time of his death at age 93. Uh, shades of grey indeed, says Deb. Sounds like he was a remarkable guy, uh, your dad, Deb. Um, let me just scroll down. Interesting one here from David Stanford. 
On the Omran Dakniesh story, the young boy, David Stanford asks simply, why didn't the photographer help the child? Rather than uh, getting all those photographs of him. Really good question, that. Right, it's exactly 20 minutes to the top of the air. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll get a brief, uh, as brief as David wants it to be. I know it's been a, another crazy day for him. Um, the, the, the tour is obviously huge. There's a lot to be done between now and going to America for the first day to New York on September the 10th. Uh, so you won't keep him too much longer. But after the quick break, we'll ask him about what people can expect in the US. And I'm really intrigued about that particular event, that 12-hour speaking engagement in New York, a day before the 15th anniversary of 9-11. Back in a minute. Do you want to release the full potential of your soul consciousness and find out how to experience that power in all areas of your life now? Go to livingasyoursoul.com for free guidance with in-depth how-to articles, free healing meditations of creation recordings, free soul solutions, and much, much more. Livingasyoursoul.com Making the profound practical. Have you lost access to important data from a computer hard drive, mobile phone, or other storage device? Maybe you have a broken hard drive containing years of information a smartphone that no longer works from which you'd like the pictures, movies and chats recovered. If you would like to recover data from any type of digital device, including desktop and laptop computers, external hard drives, cameras, smartphones, NAS and RAID servers, then contact Data Clinic today at dataclinic.co.uk now. Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. Welcome back. 20, uh, not even 20, it's 18 minutes at the top of the air. Go to the theworldwidewakeup.com, go to davidike.com for details of the American and European legs of the World Wide Wake Up Tour. All the details are there about how to get tickets, where David is appearing and when. I'll tell you what, mate, what an amazing time to be in New York. It's the day before the 15th anniversary. But just before you say anything about that, Tommy B and Lou wanted to say that the interview you did with the Aborigines was absolutely brilliant. They loved that. Well, that that's um, that was uh, a great experience. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I felt very um, privileged to have been asked to um, go down and, and, and meet them when I was in Perth. Um, and what was so fantastic about it for me was I, I talked to these two um, these two women, the, uh, the the Aboriginal people there, and they could they could have been talking out of my books, and I could have been talking out of their um, um, sort of verbal history uh, going way back. In other words, we were speaking the same language, uh, and they uh, had come. F- to their understanding of reality, their understanding of life, uh, and, and um, you know, what happens in the hidden, um, from a from 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 their um, verbal um, history uh, being being passed on through phenomenal numbers of generations, and I'd done it in the way that I've done it, and yet we'd come to the same conclusions. Uh, I found that absolutely fascinating. And, and they, they had their way of expressing it. I had my way of expressing it. But we were saying the same thing. And, you know, what, what, what has happened is that when this British Empire, other European empires as well, uh, but the, the British Empire in particular, because it was so big, when they moved in on these um, lands, um, which were then... Um, populated by people that went way back um, into uh, ancient history. Um, They uh, set out to destroy them. Um, The people that overwhelmingly did the destroying, the rank and file, they uh, did it because they thought these people were savages because they were so stupid they didn't realize what they were talking about. Um, but, But from the core, the hidden hand, um, they they were orchestrating this destruction uh, coldly, calculatedly, on purpose. Because if you are going to impose a perception, a global perception program on, on the target population, then you have to, as much as you can, destroy any alternative version of events, any alternative version of reality, any alternative version of history. 
Uh, and that's what they did with the native peoples. They did it in Africa. They did it in uh, South America, Central America. They did it in North America. Um, uh, they did it in uh, in in in, um, in Australia, etc. Um, uh, but what what was fantastic talking to those two uh, women was um, how they didn't quite manage it, and and the uh, the story, the knowledge has been passed on, has survived through to um, to present time. Uh, and uh, I, I, I've seen it with other people like uh, Kredo Mutwa in uh, the Zulu shaman in South Africa. Uh, uh, and, and what they've tried to do um, uh, in terms of the native peoples that they didn't destroy completely, and of course they killed vast numbers of them, is to assimilate them into the target population global program. And a lot of people from these uh, formerly native peoples and uh, ancient peoples have been assimilated, uh, but 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 significant numbers have not. And those people, for those people, their time has come, because as as we go through this uh, awakening, as people start to open their minds to much greater truths and possibilities um, and explanations than those they've been da- downloading uh, from the system, so these native peoples that were like the Aboriginals in in Australia, but so many others around the world, um, as they've been seen by um, uh, program, the the program people, the postage stamp program people as savages and stupid and crazy and primitive. So the awakening mentality sees them for what they are, carriers of very, very significant knowledge from the ancient world Um, before this, um, uh, this, this, this lockdown of uh, knowledge began and and the global program started to be installed. So it's just fantastic to have this coming together of people from very different backgrounds who've come to their conclusions from very different uh, um, roads and routes, but they're speaking the same language. It was unbelievable. I, I had such a great time. It looked at him, it looked at just before we talk briefly about uh, the, the 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 New York date and, and America. I say it briefly because we'll run out of time quickly, but before we do that, Shona tweets, uh, Shona Dryden on Twitter, is Credo Mutwa still around? I don't think he is, David, is he? Yeah, well, as far as I know, he is, yeah. Is he? Is he still around, is he? As far as I know, oh, yeah. Right, yeah. I, 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 I've not spoken to him for a while. Oh, that's good news. That, um, yeah, because I've seen your videos with him and your interviews with him and you get this sense of great knowledge yeah, I mean, and great that, age, that's, you know. That, that's, that's one of the situations where you're, you're moving around, you're, you're, you're yeah. focused, you're travelling and and you lose you lose um you lose touch with people uh, um uh, when you know one time you, you know i used to go out there a lot but of course i can't do that now because of all the other things that are happening um but yes as far as i know yeah great man great man a, gr- a great man a great man and uh, 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 an, an amazing story and, and and an amazing story of persistence because given that man's life and what happened to him um there would have been every reason for him to walk away, but he never has. Uh, amazing man. Uh, and uh, it's a great privilege to know him. Fantastic. And if anybody wants to see David's conversations with him, go to David's YouTube channel. All that information is there and those videos are there. They're terrific to watch. Go to davidike.com. It's all there. So you're in New York on September the 10th, which is a day before the 15th anniversary. People like me who you know, began to see the world differently after September the 11th. For us, it will always be massively important, David, to keep talking about it. What do you think it's going to be like for you to be there talking to a New York audience on that particular date? Um, well, funnily enough, it, it it sounds like it was planned. It wasn't. Um, it, it was, um, you know, my son Jamie and, and, and the other organisers, um, we're, we're looking. We were looking to go to America in the in the autumn because we were going to uh, Australia in the in the um, July August, and um, uh, the the date the 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 hall had was September the tenth. So that's how it came about. Synchronicity. Uh, I mean, meant to be, but not consciously decided in that that way. Uh, and I think it is very, very significant and it's very important we keep highlighting it because let us not forget a number of things. All this stuff in the Middle East was triggered by 9-11. Wouldn't have happened otherwise. There'd have been no invasion of Iraq. There'd have been no um, invasion of Afghanistan. 
uh, and and lo lots of things that have followed would not have happened. So that was the trigger. The other um, uh, thing is that, uh, and this is this is something I I said a lot in Australia on the mainstream media because. I was invited a lot onto mainstream uh, national uh, radio stations, even television stations. Uh, and, and I got a lot of information out that would never have got out on the mainstream before. Uh, and one of the points I made uh, was that, uh, and continually made, because I, I, I saw their faces change when I made it. You know, these people are yeah, well, we're, we're conspiracy theorists. And I said, you know, um, the, the invasion of Iraq um, did they find weapons of mass destruction? Well, no. They lied about weapons of mass destruction to justify yeah. an invasion. Well, yeah. Well, the same people that told us that gave us the official story of 9-11. Not, not just the same, uh, you know, government, the same people, the same individuals. And, and you see their faces change. And, and you say to them, so why do you accept that um, those same people lied about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq to justify a catastrophic invasion and all that's kicked off as a result of it. And yet you, 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 you kind of look in disdain that people like me are questioning the official story of 9-11. You know, it's journalistic um, schizophrenia. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That you can, you can accept one and then think that they, although they lied completely about that, they told the 100% the, the truth about 9-11. I mean, it's a nonsense. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, Cognitive dissonance, that's what it is. And, and when you point that out, you see their faces change uh, and, and they go, well, actually, actually, that's right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, from 9-11, you can, you can then go into the sequence that um, has brought us to where we are now with the, you know, the project for the new American century involving uh, Rumsfeld and um, Wolfowitz and, and um, uh, Cheney and, and, and Dove Zakheim, who ran the whole Pentagon budget um, in the Bush administration, how they produced that document in September 2000, saying they, they wanted to invade a list of countries and they named them. Um, and they were in, including um, Iraq, um, uh, Libya, Syria. And as a result of 9-11, um, and they said in the document that something like a Pearl Harbor had to happen so that this sequence of um, invasions and wars could uh, could could happen. Um, that because as, uh, as a result of 9-11, that list of countries named a year before 9-11 um, by people who were part of the uh, fundamentally part of the Bush administration at the time of 9-11. As a result of 9-11, uh, that list of countries they wanted to invade and regime change um, have been picked off. And they've been picked off under the administration of Bush and Blair. And then the list carried on being picked off under Cameron and Obama, because, again, the hidden hand is controlling the list. And thus, who is in power in the White House to continue the list? And the same uh, is planned with Clinton and and or Trump. Uh, and, and so from from 9-11, you can start to um, uh produce connections and 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 connect dots from 9-11 which 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 make complete sense of the world that we're in now and why things have happened and why things are happening it's it's fundamentally important and again it's it's so important not to forget it because it was the trigger from which all this has come and so who benefits those that wanted all that has come to happen, to happen. and and uh it's going to be a great opportunity in new york a day before the 15th anniversary to to put this into context, because, you know, the, the presentations that I'm doing around the world and that, they, they, you know, they're they are a change for each country to bring in things about that country. But uh, the, the, the overall um, presentation over the 10 hours of speaking is um, is context, context. That's what's missing. Context. You, you can look at an individual event. It might be a terrorist event. It might be a, 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 an economic collapse uh, or it might be the, the global warming hoax. You can see them as individual things or you can put them into context and show how they connect to each other. And then, whoa, do they look different to what they look uh, uh, like in and of themselves? And it's that context that um, pulling the web together and, and, and showing that the, 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 the dots, the strands are part of a much greater uh, picture. They all fit together. 
Um, that's had a massive impact on people that have come along. And it, uh, it's been incredible. The reaction of the audiences have been incredible. And it's going to be amazing in America. That's just about all we have time for. Go to the theworldwidewakeup.com. David will be coming somewhere uh, to a town somewhere near you, a city somewhere near you. Check out all the European dates and uh, go and see him. I'm telling you, you will never see anything like it as long as you live. DavidIke.com or theworldwidewakeup.com. Always brilliant to chat with you, mate. God speak Thanks, to mate. you and the team. Oh, it's, it's, it's Manchester and Ireland in January. Of course. Ah, I can't forget that. Of course, the 14th of January here in Manchester, I believe. Yeah. And the the interest in that event has been phenomenal. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, because you've not... It's been a long time since you've spoken in these parts, I think. That, that's, that's all... I mean, there's obviously huge interest anyway. But well, added you, to the fact you know, you've not been you know, up there, yeah. kind of changed. Um, uh, the, the, the last time I tried to speak in Manchester, uh, uh, I couldn't find anyone that would, that would have me, <laughs> any, any venue that would have me. Yeah, different uh, times. And how, th- how things have changed. Um, now, the um, amazing you know, Apollo Theatre, which is an amazing theatre... The only problems season. we've had um, in terms of uh, uh, venues on this tour is, funny enough, Germany. The Germany. I see. I've been watching on David We've got, we got yeah. one now. 